turn in your Bibles to the book of Mark, I would like to read from Mark chapter 6, beginning with verse 30. Mark chapter 6, beginning in verse 30, and reading through verse 32. The Word of God says in Mark chapter 6, beginning in verse 30, And the apostles gathered themselves together unto Jesus, and told him all things, both what they had done and what they had taught. And he said unto them, Come ye yourselves apart into a desert place, and rest a while. For there were many coming and going, and they had no leisure so much as to eat. And they departed into a desert place by ship privately. The main thought is where Jesus said to his disciples who were so busy, so many things were happening that they didn't even have, some of them didn't even have time to eat. They were that busy in their lives. And so Jesus said to his disciples here, Come ye yourselves apart into a desert place and rest a while. There's a lot that could be said just about that the one expression. In fact, the first word, the very first word that Jesus spoke here is very important. Usually when I think about this verse of scripture or how tired I am or how busy I am or how much I would like to get away for a while. I think about how nice it would be to go fishing or go hunting or go to a mountain cabin somewhere or go to the beach. Uh, you don't, all of you don't like the same thing. Uh, some heads are just shaking. I wouldn't go to the beach. Well, I don't particularly like the beach, but I've been to beach houses that I enjoyed being in those beach houses. I like to walk on the beach. So uh, you might go to the beach, you might go to the mountain house, you might go to the river. There are all kinds of places that you can go to to rest. But Jesus did not say go to the beach and rest or go to the mountain and rest or go hunting and rest or go fishing and rest. You can rest doing some of those things, but rather than saying go rest, first word he spoke was come and the rest that he's talking about getting is the same kind of rest that we all need we need physical rest but he's saying come you go to Jesus come to Jesus come ye yourselves apart and rest a while in a desert place come ye yourselves apart I remember many many years ago an older preacher was preaching and he said to the younger preachers that he was speaking to, he was warning us that if you don't sometimes come apart and rest a while, that you will come apart. I think that's true. These physical bodies, they've got to have rest. I'm so thankful that God does not leave it light 24 hours a day. God has made darkness for us to rest, and we need to rest. Early in my ministry, I was just about worn out. As I went to the doctor, his granddaddy was a member of the church, and he told me, he said, I know from what I've heard that you're spending way too many hours doing too many things. And he said, I want you to stay in the bed at least eight hours every 24 hours. I said, I can't do that. I don't have time to do that. He said, you will either do it now or you will come apart and it will come later. But the point he was making is that we need rest. These bodies need rest. We need physical rest. But there's a rest that's far greater than just the physical rest. And that's a rest that comes from Jesus. Where not only our body is rested, but our soul is is rested and spiritually we are in great communion and fellowship with Jesus so Jesus is saying to his apostles instead of you spending all this time 
with all of these people, he says, you come to me and rest. Come ye yourselves apart. Get away from everybody else. Come ye apart and rest a while. He wasn't telling them to retire. He wasn't telling them that they were, they'd worked long enough and it was time for them to just give up. But he was saying that periodically they need to come apart and get away from everybody. But when you get away from all those people, you need to get close to Jesus. Closer than you can get sometimes when you're around a lot of people. Now, I can, and don't, don't misunderstand that. I'll tell you, the devil can just take things. I sit there, when I say something, sometimes I think, how'd the devil just take that? I can tell you, uh, well, just get away from people. Well, good. I don't have to go to church. I can go apart and rest a while. No, you've got six days a week you can come apart and rest a while. We have one day a week that is set aside to go to the house of God to worship God. And we as the people of God, we don't need to be going uh, to rest on the Lord's Day, going off somewhere to rest. If you want to have a good rest, go to the house of God and sing the songs of God, sing the songs of Zion, hear the preaching of God's word, feel the presence of Jesus in the house of God. The bride of Christ needs to come and be a part, uh, apart from the world, come into the house of God, come ye apart and rest a while. But we do sometimes need to go apart, away from people, and go to Jesus and rest in him. Jesus tells us that there is a rest that is only found in Jesus. He tells us that a number of times in the scriptures that if you want this best rest, if you want a rest that's better than any sleep that you might get, that rest is found in Jesus. In fact, I'll tell you, brethren, that when you go to bed at night and you come apart and rest with him, when you're laying in your bed at night and you're communing with God. Right now, for a short period of time, Chris and I are in separate bedrooms. We're not mad at each other. We've just got some physical pain and ailments. And it's, it's just necessary for us to be apart in separate bedrooms right now. And one of the things that I have found is that in laying in that separate bedroom, that I can lay there and I can sing the songs of Zion... And I can sing out loud without having to worry about waking her up. And that's some of the sweetest, most spiritual time in my life has been laying there in that bed and just singing and drawing out of God, singing out loud. Now, even when we were in the bed together, I could sing and lay there and sing silently and commune with God and I could pray. But I'll tell you, there's something about making a a visible, not a visible, making a audible sound out of your mouth and worshiping God and just laying there and drawing out of God, get close to God, is a great blessing. Sometimes singing by yourself is better than singing with people. But the best singing is when you come together with God's house and we come together and worship God together. So come, Jesus says to his disciples here, come ye apart. Come ye yourselves apart and rest a while. I want you to go to Matthew chapter 11. I think probably the scripture that most people know when you think about rest in Jesus, it's in Matthew chapter 11. I want you to listen carefully to what Jesus says in Matthew chapter 11. And it makes it very clear here. See, I have, when I've heard Mark 6 and when I used to read Mark 6, and it said, come ye apart and rest a while, my carnal mind was always go rest somewhere. Go get away. But it's not just go get away, it's go to Jesus and get away with him. Matthew chapter 11, Jesus says, come, same first word that we read over there in Mark chapter 6, in, in Matthew 11 now, verse 28, Jesus says, Come unto me. And that's what he's saying over there in Mark 6. He's saying, Come unto me. Come ye apart. Come unto me. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Brethren, there is a rest that's different than just a natural rest. 
You need natural rest, but you need a spiritual rest. And your soul needs to rest. And he says, come unto me all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. Rather than when you take his yoke upon you, you're, you're working. You're laboring. Take my yoke upon you. I want you to pick a, picture a double yoke that two different oxen might be in. And I want you to picture Jesus has that yoke on himself. And Jesus says, take my yoke upon you. And you and Jesus are pulling together. You and, the pe you and Jesus need to work together. You need to labor together with Jesus. You need to have Jesus to help you when you're laboring and are heavy laden. And Jesus says here, Come unto me, all you that labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. And then he says, For I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find, the second time now he says, And ye shall find rest unto your souls. By taking his yoke upon us, we find rest for our souls. What's it all have to do with it? Are we talking about resting? Are we talking about coming apart and resting? And what do you have to do? You have to go to Jesus to come apart away from the world. Come ye apart into a desert place. That desert place now, I just picture that as being away from everything worldly and everything carnal. Come ye apart into a desert place. Come ye apart and rest a while. Find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. There's one occasion, I want you to just think about this, but I don't turn there right now, but in Matthew chapter 17, you remember how Jesus took Peter, James, and John up on that mount of transfiguration. Now brethren, climbing a mountain is not an easy task. And they went up on that mountain and Peter, James, and John followed Jesus up that mountain. And when they got up on that mountain, then Jesus was transfigured before them. And they saw Jesus shining. He was transfigured and he shined as brightly as the new noonday sun. And one of the apostles said, Lord, it is good for us to be here. Now on that occasion in Matthew 17, where they went up on the Mount of Transfiguration, you know what they had just done? They had come apart. They had gotten away from the world. They got away from all the other apostles. They got away from everyone else. And just those three apostles and Jesus went up on that mountain. And that apostle said, Lord, it's good for us to be here. Every time that you go with Jesus up on that mountain. Right now I'm talking about the mountain of God, the kingdom of heaven, Mount Zion. Every time you go up on Mount Zion and you see Jesus in his glory, you're going to be saying just like that apostle did, Lord... It's good to be here. It's a great blessing to be able to go with Jesus up on that mountain and feel his presence, to feel his power, to feel the peace of God that passeth all understanding. And brethren, you'll never find this kind of rest anywhere out there in the world. I don't care what kind of place you might go to, if Jesus is not being manifest there, you'll not find this kind of rest in that location. We need to go where Jesus is. We need to go where Jesus is manifesting his presence. Go with me, if you will, to uh, John chapter 6. And when you go to this rest, go to this place of rest, Jesus is going to feed your soul. It's not just a place. You remember how in the Old Testament one time I tried to preach a sermon on a man. In fact, I probably preached it more than once where the man said, Come home with me and what? Come home with me and refresh thyself. Well, if I go to your house, one of the things I want to do probably is I want to sit down in a chair. But then I also would sometimes, if I'm going to stay two or three days, I'm going to appreciate it if you fix a meal while I'm there. Because there are a lot of different things that bring rest to our souls. One is to get away from the work that we're normally doing. A second one is that we find food for our body. Well, the same thing's true spiritually. I need food for my soul. You remember how Jesus went into two ladies' houses, Mary and Martha. And you remember how one of those ladies was cumbered about with much serving. She was very busy. But one of those ladies bowed down at Jesus' feet 
And she chose the best part, which was to hear the word of God at the feet of Jesus. You know what, what she was feeding on there? She was feeding her soul on the bread of heaven. Who is the bread of heaven? It's Jesus. Turn in your Bibles now and look at John chapter 6 beginning in verse 31. John chapter 6 beginning in verse 31. The word of God says, Our fathers did eat manna in the desert. Was that a great miracle that God fed them in the desert? Now, brethren, I know that to begin with, they rejoiced in that manna that came down from heaven. But after a while, instead of them rejoicing in it, and instead of them thanking God for that manna, they began to murmur and complain about the manna. Did you know the, the people of God sometimes do the same thing? God is giving us blessings sometimes. And to begin with, when we first start getting the blessings, we, we thank the Lord for the great blessing that we're getting. And then, after a while, we begin to murmur and complain. I pray that God will help us that we might not do that, that we would recognize what a great blessing it is. And so these Jews are telling Jesus, our fathers did eat manna in the desert, and it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Verse 32 says, then Jesus said unto them, verily, verily, I say unto you, Moses gave you not that bread from heaven, but my father giveth you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he which cometh down from heaven and giveth life unto the world then said they unto him Lord evermore give us this bread and Jesus said unto them I am the bread of life he that what's the next word there he that cometh to me you see what did the text say in the beginning in Mark 6 come 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 ye apart and rest a while what did Jesus say in Matthew 11 28 Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And what does Jesus say now in John chapter 6? He says, He that cometh to me, he that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. Brethren, I want you to know you can find rest for your soul, and you can find food for your soul. You can eat this bread of heaven when you do what Jesus said in Mark 6. Come ye apart. Come and eat the bread. Come and rest. Come and find rest for your souls. Turn in your Bibles to Hebrews chapter 3. In Hebrews chapter 3 the word of God warns us that we better look at how God dealt with the Jews. I hear people, I heard someone this past week talking about how that person was glad that we serve a God of the New Testament, not the God of the Old Testament. I want you to know God's the same yesterday, today, and forever. God doesn't change. The things that are wrong, the things that were wrong in the Old Testament, they're still wrong today. In Hebrews chapter 3, though, the children of Israel were trying to get into a place. Now, they were going to a place where God was going to manifest his presence what was the place the children of Israel were trying to get into after they got out of Egyptian bondage where were they trying to go they were trying to go to Canaan land a land flowing with milk and honey and they were going to find rest there and everything they were going to find physically there the rest and the food and the all the other blessings, that, that was for their natural body. But I'll tell you, brethren, in Canaan land, they were also going to find rest for their souls and food for their souls. In Hebrews chapter 3, beginning in verse 10, Hebrews chapter 3, beginning in verse 10, the word of God says, Wherefore, God says, Wherefore I was grieved with that generation, and said, They do always err in their heart, and they have not known my way. So I swear in my wrath they shall not enter into what? What are the last two words in that verse? They shall not enter into my rest. That's the rest we're talking about tonight is the rest that God can give us. And the, the children of Israel, God said they will not enter into my rest. Why? Verse 12 says take heed brethren lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. What happens when you depart from the living God? 
Brethren, you can go take a vacation in any, any place in this world you want to and think that's going to be a marvelous place. You might inherit a million dollars and you might be able to go for a long time to stay in some place. But I'll tell you, if God's not there, you're not going to find rest for your soul. And if you don't have rest in your soul, no matter, you, you'll lay on a bed and you still won't sleep. You won't rest. You cannot rest. Your body can't really rest. If your soul is not at peace with God. Have you ever been troubled in your soul? And maybe you had time to sleep. You had time to rest. But you couldn't sleep. You couldn't rest. Because your soul wasn't right with God. So Jesus is talking in Mark 6 and Matthew 11. And now in Hebrews chapter 3. He's telling the children of, of God. He says you need to look at what happened to the children of Israel. They did not enter into my rest. Verses 18 and 19 of Hebrews 3 tells you why they did not enter into that rest. Look at Hebrews chapter 3 verses 18 and 19. He says, And to whom swear he that they should not enter into his rest, but to them that believed not? So we see that they could not enter in because of what? Because of unbelief. But then the same thing is true in all of our lives. The one thing that keeps us from entering into this rest is the sin of unbelief. Chapter 4 verse 1. The scripture says let us therefore fear lest a promise being left us of entering into his rest any of you should seem to come short of it. Do all of you see that this rest is something that God has had for his people in all ages of the world. Old and New Testament there has always been a rest for God's people. There's always been spiritual food for God's people. There's always been a time of communion and fellowship with God. But if the people of God do not serve God, honor Him and obey Him, they miss this rest. This rest is not eternal heaven, by the way. This rest is a rest God's people have here on this earth. In fact, in verse 11, Hebrews chapter 4, verse 11, the scripture says, Let us what? Let us labor, therefore, to enter into that rest, lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. You have to work to get into whatever this rest is. You have to labor to get into this rest. Indeed you do. And he says here, let us labor to enter into that rest, lest any of you should seem to, to come short of it. One more verse in chapter 4, verse 16. Let us, therefore... What's the next word? Come. Come. Everything we're looking at tonight has been talking about us coming. Come ye apart. Get away from the world. Go into this desert place. Separate yourself from all the things that would interfere with you having fellowship and communion with God. Come ye apart into a desert place. And rest a while. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Come unto me, and I'll give you the bread of life. Come, let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace. Do you know who you have to come to to get to the throne of grace? You have to go to Jesus. He's the only mediator between God and man. So Jesus is teaching us here. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace to obtain mercy and to find grace to help in time of need. Now brethren, you can be laboring just as hard as a human being can labor and still have this rest. Everybody hear what I just said? You can be laboring and still have this rest. But the only way you can have this rest while you're laboring is if you're going to the throne of grace to obtain mercy and to find grace to help in time of need. Do you know why we get tired in our service to God sometimes? It's because we're trying to do it in our own strength instead of asking God for his grace to do what we're supposed to be doing. In closing, go to, go to Revelation just a moment. Look at first look at Revelation chapter 3. Revelation chapter 3. Jesus is speaking to the church in Revelation 3, starting in verse uh, 14. He's speaking to the church at Laodicea. 
And remember, I want you to remember, he's speaking to the church. He's not speaking to dead sinners that are dead in trespasses and sin. He's speaking to the church. And he says to the church in Revelation chapter 3, I want to start with verse 19. He says, As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Now listen to what he says. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice, have you heard his voice tonight telling you to come? Come ye apart. Come apart. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. Come unto me, and I'll give you the bread of life. Come unto the throne of grace to obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. He says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and will sup with him and he with me. You know what we need to do is sit down and have a meal with Jesus. Sup with him. He'll come and he'll sup with us and we will be able to have a meal with him. The word of God says, To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne even as I also overcame and am set down with my father in his throne. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Jesus is not knocking at the heart of a dead alien sinner. He's knocking at the door of the church and he's warning those in the church at Laodicea, you're lukewarm and I'm about to spew you out of my mouth. And you'd better repent. I'm rebuking you and I'm telling you, if you'll open this door, if you'll get rid of that barrier that you have, do any of you have barriers between you and God? Things that are keeping you from having fellowship with God, keeping you from going to God? Then you've got to tear those barriers down and open the door and go in and sup with him and he will sup with you. Closing, go to Hebrew, uh, Revelation chapter 22. <laughs> Revelation chapter 22 and verse 17. Now what does, <clears throat> what does Jesus say? What's the one word it's been common that we've been looking at in what Jesus says. Jesus says come. Not only does Jesus tell us to come, but the bride, the church tells people come. Not come to the church, come to Jesus. <clears throat> in Revelation twenty-two seventeen, and the spirit and the bride say come and let him that heareth say come and let him that is a thirst, come, and whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. Jesus is the bread of life. Jesus is the water of life. What does Jesus tell us to do? Come, come ye apart. Come ye apart. Come unto me and find rest for your souls. May God help us to go to Jesus is my prayer for Christ's sake.